Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So there's been a lot of drama going on on TikTok over the past 24 hours. So if you guys don't know, there's a whole genre called the trad wives. And I've ran across these influencers, you know, every now and then. You guys might know big influencers such as Nara Smith. She's one of like the top trad wives. Um, she's racially ambiguous. She's 22, just had her third baby. Beautiful girl. She's a model. Her, her husband's a model. Toddlers requested some yogurt this morning and we were running low. So I just decided to make it myself. They always have to have granola with their yogurt. So I made that first by adding some oats, cinnamon, maple syrup, a smidge of peanut butter, some coconut oil, some coconut flakes. I gave that a really good mix and also decided to add some peanuts in there as well. I transferred that over to my baking sheet, pressed it down, and then popped that in the oven. In the meantime, I poured some milk into my pot and heated that up on the stove. Once that barely reached a simmer, I let that cool off, pulled out my granola, sprinkled it with some cherries, cranberries, and some more coconut flakes. When my milk was lukewarm, I combined some of the leftover yogurt I have with the warm milk before pouring it back into my milk, covering that with a towel and letting it rest in a warm place for a few hours. By this time, my granola had cooled enough for me to break it up and put it away in a glass jar. Depending on the consistency you want your yogurt to be, you can let it sit for about six hours or overnight before popping it in the fridge for another few hours. Once I pulled my pot out of the fridge, I gave the yogurt a good mix and it was ready to serve. Put some yogurt in the bowls, topped it with the granola, added some raspberries and obviously a drizzle of honey. I popped any leftovers in the fridge and they were so excited to have them. And so a lot of these girls try to reenact what it's like to be a housewife in the 1950s. So this whole trad wife conversation has caused a lot of drama on social media as of late. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch the videos right here. TikTok's trad wives are under attack because the internet thinks they're a plague to society. These trad wives on social media are gonna be the end of y'all. They are selling you a life and a dream that they do not even live. In the past few months, the internet has been flooded with a surge of content where young moms and wives look and act like they came out straight out of a 1950s magazine. They are devoting themselves to their kitchen and their family, taking care of their working husband and children, while also looking extremely content and very fashionable. These are the internet's trad wives, and they are pushing the new, most ridiculed genre of content currently on the internet. The world became familiar with trad wives because many of them celebrate and promote their values through social media channels like YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. There, they've created communities through hashtags like hashtag trad wife and use these channels to provide tips and tricks about their lifestyle. Some of the most successful trad wife influencers have well over a million followers. For example, Nara Smith and Hannah Nealman of Ballerina Farm, both of which are two content creators that are probably in the very top. Smith has 1.5 million followers on TikTok, while Nealman has a whopping 8.5 million followers on Instagram. All right, so now that you guys are up to speed, there's a new chick in the trad wife community. I've never heard of this girl. I've never seen her until today. And again, we live in a day and age where everything is content and people do anything to go viral. So her name is Lily Gaddis, and basically she's going viral because she's in the kitchen dressed like a trad wife. And she says that, you know, she's basically tired of dumb whores and broke ass niggas. And so people were shocked at how just easily it flowed off the tongue. She had no shame. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this video really quick. Gold diggers? But that's the exception. I'm the rule. Everybody I know who's married right now, they're married to broke ass niggas. Um. All right, so you guys just saw the video of her. So of course that went viral all over TikTok and Twitter and on Instagram. And so people were like, hold up now. Uh, somebody in the comment section named Ty says, married to who? And she says, you heard me. And then somebody else says, I didn't expect that. And then, of course, it, there's always a coon in the bunch, honey. Uh, somebody said, I don't care. She's bad. I can fix her. So, you know, even with all that, you still got some folks who want to holler at her. Now, what's really interesting about this situation 
is that, you know, once this backlash started forming on social media, a lot of people would th thought that she would come back and be apologetic and be, you know, sorry and, you know, remorseful for her dropping the N-word. And uh, that's not what y'all got. So let me go ahead and play y'all this video right here. So a recent video of mine seems to have um, upset members of a certain community. And it this um, all the backlash just really made me, you know, just really do a deep dive, like do a soul search. And after all that, I still couldn't find a care. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. And so basically in her updated response, she doesn't care. She shrugged her shoulders and said she can't find a, you know, a, a fuck to give basically. And so of course the internet, they decided to like start digging and investigating, you know, who this lady was, what she's about. And they ended up finding her job. So they basically found her job um, and she works for an elderly disabled company in Wilmington, North Carolina. And so her job started getting a bunch of phone calls. People were sending, you know, the job emails of this video. All of this has gone down in the past 24 hours. And so do you think she's remorseful? Do you think she's crying tattoo tears? Hell nah, she's as defiant as ever. Basically, she's taken to social media and she says, oh no, I just got fired, hashtag mob. Then she posts a picture of herself with a gun in her pocket. Well, this isn't very trad wife-like. I'm really confused by her persona. Are you gonna be a 50s housewife? Or are you gonna be a modern woman, okay? On top of that, she goes on to say that basically, um, she's been fired from her job. She also got banned on TikTok, but she created another TikTok page. And what I find very interesting with this new TikTok page that she has is that she's in her car. She's talking about the US election. She even got an interview with InfoWars. And as you guys can see, she says this, thank you guys for getting me this far, especially the lovely black community that got me to the point of fame. Who needs a job when you guys help me out the most in my career, hashtag MAGA. So this to me is definitely looking like a psyops. You know, you got people in the comments talking about who hurt you and you know, they're glad that she got fired. But we live in a day and age where people do any and everything for content. People do anything to go viral. So I'm not shocked. She's probably gonna make more in endorsements and GoFundMe money than she would have made working at her job with the elderly. She knew what she was doing. And you know, it's just really sad that this is the route that people are going now by trying to get people triggered by using racial terms and stuff like that. So I just find this whole situation disgusting that this is what she needs to do to go viral and to get a viral moment. Into this, how much is Israel paying you to infiltrate the conservative movement? How many shekels is your is your conservative commentary worth? And, and what are you psyoping us into exactly? I want to know. Dude, I have so many shekels. I mean, I had to put my camera here because the shekels are all hidden over that way. Um, and do a pan. We, thing, no, do a pan now. We have to see the shekels. <laughs> no, no, no. I can't show you. <laughs> okay, well, but, no, but this, the, is, the but this giveaway, is what's... Yeah, go ahead. The biggest giveaway, apparently, that I am apparently a Jew when I'm actually a Southern Baptist um, is my big nose, so... We'll say that about that. Well, it's, you know, it's all right. You have a big nose. It makes it easier for you to smell the food you're cooking and, and make sure it's good or not. I don't even think it's that, to be honest. Uh, what, what I see happening is now everything is a Jewish psyop. Uh, people used to accuse me of the same thing. And, and now I do commentary, let's say, critical of Israel. And now uh, I'm on the good side of these groups. And I just want everybody to get along. I, I just want everybody to see the world for what it is. I just do neutral commentary. I do play-by-play -play of American politics, American culture, whatever. You, whatever. I mean, in a way, you're kind of doing the same thing, just, just in a different format. Um, so, so to clarify, though, you are not Jewish and you've never been Jewish. No. <laughs> Israeli intelligence has never reached out to you in any way, shape, or form. No, but if they do, I would be a great agent for them, I got to say. Mm. How many shekels would it cost to buy your commentary? It depends on how much a shekel is worth. So maybe like five, because I'm kind of cheap. So five would probably buy me off. Okay, I'm talking, speaking to the men right now. So I think you guys are really worried a lot about your gym muscles and that it's not like perfect or whatever. I don't know what I'm doing with this fucking avocado. But um, girls don't care. In fact, I actually do not like gym guys at all. And let me explain to you why. So, you know how guys, you guys are not a fan of like fake eyelashes, 
fake fingernails, fake lips, fake boobs. I don't know, fake hair. I don't know. You know, you know that look. You know what I mean? Well, that's exactly the equivalent for girls with super extreme gym guys, like who have the perfect body. It just seems like, you know, like you're obsessed with yourself. All you do is look in the mirror and you're doing all these fucking contortions with your body. I, that's weird. You know what I find hot? Hottest guy I've seen in the longest time is that the mechanic fixing my car. Good lord, this man is attractive. He's got like fucking, first of all, he's got like grease on his face. He's got like real muscles from, from lifting tires and shit. That's what we find attractive. That's feral. That's like base animal instinct. And I'm just like, I could eat you up. That's attractive. So don't be worrying about going to getting your perfect six pack. It's a little gay, to be honest. Little gay. Don't get offended. I'm just saying we like real men in their natural state. That's hot. And I'm not saying that there shouldn't be consequences, but we also need to realize that people love to get black folks triggered, especially on social media. And now she's using this to her benefit. Now all the conservative outlets are reaching out to her and everything else. I just find the whole situation really, really disgusting. So with that being said, y'all, I leave the conversation up to you guys. I want to know y'all's thoughts and opinions. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. I look forward to reading it. Make sure you guys hit this video with a like and also feel free to share the video. What do y'all think about this situation? How do you feel about, you know, her dropping the N-word, going viral, then getting fired from her job, only to now today to see her, you know, doing interviews and getting all of this social media fame? You know, again, attention whoring knows no bounds. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show.